Hey, what up, boys? So now the dust has settled and lines have been drawn, it's time to move on and actually talk about the things that matter. Baseless speculation for a game that quite literally doesn't exist. But before we get into that, sit back, relax, and grab yourself a... Kilpa Kyola, because after hyper-analyzing all the statements and panels on stream, I think we've come up with a pretty definitive expectations of the content, systems, and a breakdown of the world map, as well as what we'll be following in the coming months leading into Phase 2. And today, I want to break all that down for you in a nice neat package so we can lose ourselves in a nice dose of the copium. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so cross-referencing my expectations video prior to the roadmap announcement, I think we pretty much nailed what to expect, bar a few bells and whistles, replaced by other unexpected bells and whistles. With Phase 3 coming in May, and what most people consider to be the real Alpha 2 launch, actually far exceeding our expectations. So I'll break down this video into segments discussing the major parts of Phase 1 and its main focuses. Serviceability, scalability, performance, and progression are our main focuses for phase one with an expectation of one minor patch and one major patch before phase two begins because yes something i feel like has gone over a lot of people's heads is that phase one is only lasting for about two months before phase two is deployed with the rollout of its content However, an important piece of information that Intrepid emphasized during this presentation is how not everything listed is going to be available at the start of each phase, with a clear example of that given for phase one. Now, races. Very important thing about races. We have Vec, Kalar, and Empyrean to start. In, but I think it'd be Vec um, and Kalar to start, and then Empyrean will be added in phase one. Yeah, that might yeah. be true. That, that might be true. Therefore, our Empyrean friends are likely going to be added as part of the first major update roughly six weeks into Phase 1. But what about the land mass and the content? Well, I think it's pretty safe to assume everything listed in the world, node, archetype, weapons, and PvP category are going to be present and testable at the start as they're pretty much the core requirement for the game to even be testable. We've pretty much seen all of this stuff already, including the nodes, the taxes, the commodities, etc etc. It's all there and functional, a pretty complete gameplay loop and I am extremely excited to get my hands on it. The most interesting part of the presentation though comes from the first line. 55 plus square kilometers of the western and eastern Aelan Riverlands, the Sandswall Desert and the Vandegard Tropics. A lot of people took this to assume that the world map for the Alpha 2 launch is only going to be 55 kilometers squared, significantly smaller than the Alpha 1's 70 plus kilometers squared world. But allow me to prove to you that this is not the case. When it says 55 kilometers squared of the eastern and western riverlands, it is only referencing the riverlands, as we can overlay the presented map and discover that we're not actually getting the full riverlands during this phase one launch. Why this is remains a mystery. However, we can speculate on it as it likely has something to do with the volcano and story arcs revolving around that, as Steven's ambitions for this zone are really quite exciting. We have concept art for the volcano area and also also the transition oh, yeah. from the volcano area be like the other uh, like foresty realm very cool um and then also i know you wanted to talk a little bit about the ashy version too which absolutely I yeah as you guys know we have many biomes in ashes uh but one of the things we're playing with that kind of ties into maybe of the weather system but i guess it's not just a weather system right it's like even an event system like ash coming out of a, of a volcano impact the, the local biome with this kind of ash, you know, material layer, or whatever that, that exists on, uh, you know, terrain or foliage actors and stuff like that, just to go the next level in seeing how events change the world, seeing how weather can change the world. This ash layer that takes over the Riverlands after a volcano eruption sounds a lot like the same type of tech that they're using for the weather and season layers. And I think it's pretty safe to assume that this just isn't ready yet, thus closing off this zone for the initial launch of Alpha 2. However, this does not mean the Riverlands is lacking in content and unfinished. Oh, no, 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 no. Quite the contrary, my friends. 
If we overlay the already existing map that we've seen during the Node War Showcase, we can pretty much accurately determine the locations of our nodes and their specific zones of influence. Within these locations, we have a lot of interesting content to enjoy, including our 111 treasure maps, whatever these may be, and you bet your ass I'm going to be making a video about these sometime soon. 36 points of interest, including the graveyard, the highwaymen hills, and the farmlands shown from previous showcases. Three world bosses, one of which will be featured in this month's upcoming showcase, 16 public events, node wars, and the highly anticipated dungeons. There are four pocket dungeons to start with, and we only really know the names of two of them, I think. The Halls of Judication, shown during the Mage Showcase, and the Citadel of the Steel Bloom, teased by Steven when they showed off the Bard's armor set prior to last month's showcase, leaving the other two dungeons completely unknown. Will these be one of the dungeon locations seen from Alpha 1? Perhaps a slice of the Underrealm that was also present during Alpha 1. Who knows? But I am very excited. However, yes, I've said this word five times already in this video. The Crown of the Biome. The Grand Dungeon is also available to test the Tower of Carfin. Its interior is said to be massive, with the surrounding zone around it reflecting scale unlike any zone that we've seen in an MMORPG before. A true return to form for the genre, and I'm genuinely excited to explore the Riverlands and its vast amounts of landmass. Speaking of landmasses, we also get to enjoy and explore the initial states of both the Sand Squall Desert and the Vandegar Tropics before we, as explorers, begin settling our nodes in these locations during Phase 2, and also solidifying the disappearance of my beard, as I did make a bet with Steven, to which he did deliver. The desert does exist. Now, the reveal that really blew me away was how far along their artisan skills are, as apparently the vast majority of them are in-game, just missing animal husbandry and the skill trees that are planned to come during phase two. Whoever the team are at Intrepid who are working on the artisan skills, I cannot express how impressed I am that you've managed to get all of this ready, including the fishing and hunting. Quantarian Slurp is the dev leading this team, I'm pretty confident. Wait, wait, let me just check my notes. Ah yes, that was it. It certainly seems like the team have cooked up a storm, and I'm really genuinely over the moon about the state of the artisan skills. The only disappointing thing with the whole roadmap was the three planned races at the launch, but when you consider how hard the artisan and content teams have worked in order to bring us over 1000 recipes to craft armor, processed materials, and weapons with, it's really quite understandable. We can likely see a light, medium, and heavy armor set for the five dungeons, a light, medium, and heavy armor set for the three starting races, a light, medium, and heavy armor set for the three world bosses, and a bunch of other possible locations that I could list off the top of my head because I'm high IQ, but is far out of the scope of today's video. I have, however, compiled the majority of in-game collectible armor sets here, so feel free to pause the video and take a gander. Overall, I am really excited about the state of phase one, despite the short, non-persistent state that it's in. But if the Intrepid believe that this is best for the game, I will support it and use the limited time we have to take my army of copium addicts and break the game as much as we can. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO, and it feels oh so good to deep dive the copium again. If you want to continue more detailed speculation and have some more of the good stuff, come join us over at twitch.tv forward slash because we're high on copium. <laughs>